we're going to look at some common malware persistence techniques and I'm going to show you a couple of tools and techniques of how to identify this behavior. Now the sample I'm using is a nano core sample and it's this Synapse X executable that I've got in the bottom left of my desktop and I've pulled this from a site called app.anyrun which is like a public online sandbox. So what I'll do is I'll provide you with the hash of the file in the description of the video so you can download and follow along if you'd like to do that. So back to my virtual machine what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to use a tool called RedShot. Now what will happen with RedShot if I open this up is I can take a shot here so you've got here first shot so I can take a shot of the machine and the registry before I've infected the machine with malware. Once that's done, I can then infect the machine and then take the second shot. And what it will do is it'll just show me what files, what registry keys, etc., have been created during that time frame. So what I'm going to do as well is I'm just going to have Process Hacker running as administrator. And I will have Procmon running as well. So I've got a filter here where it's just showing any processes that are created. So we can see there it is actually capturing files. And what I'm going to do is just right click on the malware and hit run as administrator. And what we can see, well, first of all, we see this pop up saying error and we have an OK button. So I'll just press that. And when I scroll down at the bottom, we can see the malware is running away nicely. And we have a few events that have been generated as for our process creations here in Procmon. So if we take a look at these, we can see here, this is the executable that I kicked off and we can see scheduled tasks is being launched. So the scheduled task.exe and the scheduled task is being created called app service and it's given us a location of the file that's going to auto start. And it's the C users admin app data local temp and then this temp file is being created and we have a second one being created here so we don't know what it's doing yet but nonetheless it's interested and it's given us some indication that the malware is creating some sort of uh, persistence so i'm just going to stop capturing events here and uh, i'll just make this window a bit smaller and if we go back to red shot i can now run my second shot and see what information we can glean from this tool So that's just running away in your bottom you can see the keys being enumerated the values and we now have this compare button that's been highlighted so if i click on that that will just load up a notepad here with the content of what's been created so at the top we've got the date and time that the two shots were taken the computers that were run on and the username and first we have a couple of keys that were deleted and, and like I said there's a lot of information here not all of it will be relevant so you will have to sort of pick through it and try and find out anything that's relevant to the binary that we've run so we can see here Procmon it's not going to be of interest to us um, but as we scroll down here I can see um, a couple of keys have been added so we can see here keys added 16 and these two have been created for the malware so we have this app service and app service tasks that will be going in our notes. So we want to take a look at the scheduled tasks. And if I just scroll down, is there anything else that's of interest? There's a few more values added. Oh, so this one's of interest here, this top one. So we can see here, this is a common technique used. You'll see this run key being used. So current version run under this location and it's set in this new location. Now this isn't the one we've kicked off, we set it off from desktop, but you can see the malware's copied itself to program files, a directory called app service and renamed itself to app sv.exe. So that's the location we'd want to check out. So if I do that now, uh, let's just open up File Explorer, go to C, Program Files, this is the directory that's been created, and there's the malware, it's copied itself to its new uh, persistence location. If I just open up uh, a tool called hash my files and if I just drag that in and the original one from the desktop which hasn't been deleted interestingly we can see that the hash for the files both match so it's not a you know newly created file it's just a copy of the existing file 
And if I also, if I just go back to the red chart output, I could also just, just to confirm what I'm seeing here, if I open up start and go to reg edit, I can spell it right. And open this up, we can actually navigate to that location and just see the actual key that's been created. So it's HKLM, which is um, local machine, software, um, Windows, is it Microsoft first, sorry, Microsoft. Let's we'll scroll down to Windows. Uh, and then we have current version, which is there. Let's make this a bit bigger. And then we should have the run folder here for the run keys that are going to start when the machine starts up. So we can see I've already got one in there for VMware, because obviously it's a virtual machine. And here's the run key that's been created to start the malware up from its new persistence location when the machine is um, powered up. So we can close that. And I'm just going to close this because we don't need that anymore. What we can also do, the other tool that I, I like to use is um, called Auto Runs. So I'm just going to double click Auto Runs. And again, straight away, we can see these. If we just look at the folder here, you can see under task scheduled, you can see there's one created for the desktop, interestingly enough, and one created for the new persistence location that we've identified. Now, again, you could go to task scheduler as well and view the scheduled tasks in there. So I'll just open this up. And we can see there the two services that have been created. So you could do a bit more digging in there if you wanted to. I'm just going to leave this run in. Uh, I don't think it's found the run key yet. If I just scroll down and I'll leave that running. We'll come back to that later in the video just to uh, show that it does find it. So next one I want to do, just for the sake of them with the capability of the malware, I'm just going to open up Notepad. And I'm just going to pretend that this is me logging onto my banking website. I've been infected and I'm putting in my username and I'm putting in my password to log into the to log into the banking website and let's just pretend that I've logged in now and I'm looking at all my uh, banking details and what we're going to do next is if I go back to Procmon and I'm not capturing anymore so that's great and what I can just do is I can actually just terminate the malware I don't need this running anymore on my machine so I'm just going to right click on it in process hacker and click terminate tree And on here, I'm just going to remove my filter, apply that, and I'm going to import this into proc. Again, we've used this before, so I just need to make sure that the Fred ID column is enabled. I'm going to click File, Save, and I'm going to save this as a CSV to my desktop. So if I minimize this, anything I don't need, and we'll just open up prop dots. I should just take a second or so to launch up. And I'm going to click on these three dots next to Procmon. And on my desktop, I'll open the log file. And then for the launcher, when I click this, this will bring up a list of processes that have been captured in that log file. And the one I'm interested in is the first one that I launched, which is, which is the SynapseX.exe. So if I just double click that and then click refresh, and that should generate the graph for me to take a look at what's been going on with this malware. So I'll just make this a bit bigger and I'll just hold control and scroll in with my mouse. So the first thing we have here is the SynapseX.exe. So obviously that's what we started with. And we can see here this blue oval we have the IP address of 8.8.4.4. .4. So the malware is trying to make an internet connection. And this is the, I think it's a backup Google DNS server. So all it's doing here is it's obviously just calling out to this address and seeing if it has in, uh, network connectivity onto the internet. 
And if we just move up, we can start seeing what the malware has done here. So this first pink line that's coming out the top into this orange box, we can see it's creating a file. And that's in C users admin app data roaming along what seems like a randomly generated name that could possibly be something to do with the serial number of the virtual machine perhaps. And then we have this run.dat file which is created. So we could actually navigate to that location. So if we just, um, let's make it a bit smaller. Uh, so if we go to C, users, admin, um, I don't think I've got hidden folders shown, have I? Let me just check. Show hidden folders and files, so I need to show them so I can view the app data folder. And we're in roaming, there's the long directory name, and there's the run.dat file. So I could drag that into a hex editor just to see if it gives me any useful information. It doesn't. So over the name of run.dat, we've not really got much information on what that does. Um, so let's take a look in this. What's of interest here? Let's take a look at this logs folder. So it's got the name of the user, which is uh, admin. And we have this again, seems randomly generated. There's probably some sort of algorithm in the background that's been used to generate that. If I drag this into H, uh, HXD, we can actually see here that I've, when I went to start menu, um, I've opened up regedit. Um, I've also opened up notepad. So again, it's key logging this. Um, so I've opened up notepad, which was untitled. And you can see here, it's captured the username that I typed into notepad and the fake password that I entered. So just interesting to see that, you know, it is key logging there, it is capturing keystrokes and has the potential to capture your passwords. If we go back to, let's just go back to um, Procdot, we can see again, another uh, pink line here for create file and it's created this program files, um, app service app sv.exe. Again, we've identified that from uh, red shot um, and we also I think we identified that in uh, auto runs as well we then have you can you can't really see it but from the bottom of this uh, orange box here it says set as value so you can see here here's the run key that's created for the auto start that we looked at earlier in regedit if I just go back to auto runs I just wonder if that's found that yet uh, it has, we can see that here. So HKLM software, Microsoft Windows current version run. And again, it's identified the um, malicious run key, the malicious executable. So that's cool. We then have another one for create file. It has these temp files, which if you look just to the left of this orange uh, arrow here, it's been deleted. So if I go to that location, that won't be there. We have these scheduled tasks that's launched. So this relates to the temp um, files that were created. We also have another file that was created here, the task.dat, we've looked at that. And we have another temp file which was deleted. So again, in the space of 13 minutes there, we've looked at some useful tools to help identify how malware persists. And we've just seen some common techniques of how it does persist on the file system. So thanks for watching.